In this video, we're going to talk about the H2B application process and the local recruitment requirement to demonstrate that you are unable to find local workers to supplement your permanent labor force. It's not that hard. We'll see you after the break. channel where we give you reliable information to help you make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes. This is video Fizzor in our H2B visa uh, application series. And today we're talking about what you have to do for recruitment. Unlike in 2018, the last time we made these videos, which are still the top ranked on YouTube, things have changed for the better for you. In fact, things are now arguably faster and most definitely cheaper. Trent, What's it look like? It's definitely cheaper. It's definitely easier. So if you haven't been following our series, we're picking up. You've just received your cert or your notice of approval from the Department of Labor. And in order to receive your certification, you have to recruit locally to demonstrate you can't find workers. Now, if you're looking at the H2B visa program, we know you can't find workers. That's a common trend, but you do have to recruit locally to prove to the Department of Labor that you can't find workers. How do you do that, Trent? So there are a few, maybe like four points of recruitment. The first is the seasonal job directory, which is a Department of Labor website. And this is done automatically. So once you've received that notice of acceptance, this is automatically uploaded. That's, Which is amazing. That's easy, because right? It used to be that you would have to find a local newspaper that was a daily, if you were like in a metropolitan or city area, and make sure that you're at, you'd have to put in advertisements yourselves, you have to write them up yourself. You're, charged, know, you're charged by the word, typically. I, and I remember us doing this when we realized that the marketing companies that made a meal out of every one of these were trading like three and a half thousand dollars for a 700 word placement. It was and we a told lot. our clients, it was a lot. We'll do that. But for free. No. None of that matters. That's in the past. All gone. No more newspapers. So now, seasonal yeah. job directory, automatic upload. You don't have to do a thing. Next, state workforce agency. Again, you don't do a thing. Once you receive that notice of acceptance, it's automatically posted on your state workforce agency website. Now, you do have to do something, you know, and this is something that we don't directly cover in a video, but before you get your 9142B in, you do have to have uh, a job order that the state workforce agency right. approves. We're not gonna talk about that, but we do enter into the state workforce agency realm, you know, before we even get to this step. Suffice it to say that uh, it's something you should also give time for. If you talk to us later, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll talk to you about it. Right, so, right. So that, that job order that you submit, you submit it within your 9142B application. You also send it to your state workforce agency simultaneously. That job order is what I am mentioning that's automatically uploaded. Yeah, and that means you're already registered with your state workforce right, agency, right. you've already been approved. And some states is actually like quite a pain to do. Um, some states it's easier, it's gonna depend on the state that you're in. Uh, okay, right. that's number three. Number three, contact a bargaining representative. Most companies, that's not an issue. Because most companies don't have unions. Right, so the alternative to that is to post the ad somewhere where potential employees will see it. Now, that can be two locations in your general kind of work area, maybe a hardware store if you're in construction, maybe something of that nature, or what we always recommend is posting that ad on your website. So your company's website, if you have a now hiring, a contact us, an opportunities page, post the entire job order on your website, and that meets this requirement. Right. It's also, the website is also one of the best places to put in to, to have a good audit trail because you can timestamp your website. That becomes important because later on when we put in a recruitment report, we attest, you attest rather as the employer that you've done this activity. If you're ever audited, you have to prove it. So attestation means I swear this happened. I swear I put things on my website or on the front door of my house. Uh, Proving it means like showing tangible proof and a website has an advantage over, you know, uh, an attestation that you put up a job order on a board near your workplace 
because you know you have all this this whole digital trail that definitively proves that it happened. Right. So you can post this on your website. If you don't want this ad to remain on your website forever and ever, mm -hmm. take a couple screenshots. You know, capture capture that date posted. Um, you know, do do take steps like that to sort of add a little more security for yourself down the line. Super easy. And then the last thing you need to do is you need to contact in, in this kind of realm. You need to contact for, former employees to see if they want the job. Right. And these are former employees that you may have laid off um, without calls. So again, if you're exploring the H2B visa, usually you don't have these employees because you're hiring anyone you can find who will reliably show up. Now, if this is a former employee who quit or you fired because they wouldn't show up, yeah. you don't have to contact them. They don't fall in this category. But if you're an employer who has been impacted by COVID and you had to lay off some employees and now you're thinking the H2B is a better avenue for, for seasonal labor, you have to contact those employees that you laid off maybe because of COVID. Yeah. No big deal. Okay. Okay. So the fourth thing is additional recruitment. Okay. So this is a special thing that happens for some employers. Sometimes. 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 Yes. So what's the last and the final thing you have to do, Trent? So sometimes when you receive that notice of acceptance, there will be a note in your instructions. By the way, this is all in your instructions. So what we're telling you, you can find out yourself after you receive a notice of acceptance, but you really don't want to wait until then to try to figure things out. But if you review your instructions, which you always should, there may be additional recruitment required. You know, this happens sometimes. It's not that common from my experience. Maybe during COVID, it's happened a little more often, but that may just be like contact, you know, your local XYZ and ask if they have any referrals. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it varies by state to state. And a lot of times this is not a requirement. Okay, so what else do we need to think about? We need to think about what happens. Okay, so we have this, we've met all our requirements. People so, actually start writing in asking about the jobs. What yeah. do we need to be thinking during that time? Think America first. America first. As long as you keep the general idea, the general principle that, you know, think America first, you will be okay in this process. We're not getting political here. What are we trying to say? Why are we what, saying that? What phrase? that means is yeah. the h 2 program is yeah. designed to help companies who are unable to find the workers to meet their temporary needs. The American workers to meet their temporary needs. So you have to recruit American workers. You have to interview American workers. You have to give the opportunity to American workers to be employed if they meet your qualifications. So if you state in your 9142B that you require three months experience in a position and you find out that an applicant has zero months experience, obviously you don't have to hire them. But if they had three months experience, you would have to give them fair consideration. Which means at least an interview of some sort. Now, sometimes, or rather than most of the applications you're going to get are actually going to be from foreign workers in foreign countries. Because believe it or not, more people check this uh, these job postings from foreign countries than they do from the US. And there's a lot of confusion that, oh, hey, this is this seems like a clear H2B posting, which is a visa for foreign workers. So let me go ahead and apply for it so I can get recruited. Those folks you don't have to consider uh, for your recruitment report. And in fact, you can, you can actually just let those applications sit idle no, it's good to like keep them in a file and, and collect them. But I will say this, my favorite one that we ever that we ever got. So we got a US applicant for a position and you checked his Twitter. Do you remember this? I do, I do. Do you remember this? He was not extending an offer. And why is that? I don't remember the details. I don't want to get into the details, but I think it involved tweets about animal abuse and by that i mean he was tweeting about his abuse of animals in sort of a boasting manner yeah he was a he was an animal torturer and so uh in the recruitment report we uh we, we noted that uh we didn't hire the animal torturer 
And then that was accepted. So it was accepted. It was accepted. There, there has been no audit. There has been no no questioning of that to date. Yeah. You know, so when you when when you're reviewing applicants, just like for any job, you are allowed to look into that. That's just a little pro tip. You don't have to hire animal torturers uh, if you were wondering. All right, Trent. So finally, okay. So we treat all applicants. We give everybody a chance. We don't have to consider the foreign nationals. We can look at people's social media and not hire animal torturers. Um, the last step is a recruitment report. What is that? What does that actually entail? Yeah, so you file a recruitment report. Basically, you outline, and you know, we outline in a fairly formal way, yeah. but you outline everything that you did. You describe where you posted your ad. Was it your company website or was it, you know, a couple of job boards in your local community? If you know, animal torturer applied, yeah. then you would provide his name, his contact information and what the outcome was. So you would say, did not hire. And then you also need to explain why you did not hire. And you would say, because he tortures animals. Or and, at least and, tweets, about it. and tweets about it. And tweets about it, that's um, his Twitter. And you submit that um, through Flag, our favorite, favorite portal. And within hopefully 48 hours, you And here's state. Flag, the Santiago <laughs> is gonna post for the fifth string video. Here's a screenshot of Flag. Sorry, that's just that's and, become a meme across all the videos. <laughs> yeah. Within hopefully 48 hours, you receive your certification from the Department of Labor. And that's it. That's the whole thing. Flag has made it very simple. The fact that you don't have to post in newspapers that makes this, has made the step very simple. But Most, then, yeah. do you get your workers after the certification? Do you get your workers after the certification? <laughs> no! No. And if you're wondering what comes after the certification, Tune into our next video because we're going to get into the details. If you like this video and you like this information, you like this whole series that we're putting out, it's a series, it's value. And eventually we are going to talk about when you get your workers. We are, we're going to get there. If you're liking it so far, though, subscribe, like, uh, let us know in the comments if you have any questions and we'll get back to you. And again, we're taking on clients through November 12th for this because as we've mentioned in a couple of the videos, we want to be able to file our last prevailing wage by November 15th. So do reach out to us. All the contact information is in the description. That's it. See you next time.